Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hiral Dadia. We have with us Harish Bijur, brand guru, joining in. Uh, Harish, welcome to the show. And it's always a pleasure. I think earlier as well, we've spoken about how COVID has had an impact in terms of where consumption goes, in terms of where uh, the overall scenario on that front goes. But now taking into consideration the kind of, uh, you know, transition that we've seen over the last 12, 18 to 24 months, uh, how have you seen the trend in terms of returning to normalcy? Okay, it is the typical heartbeat line, you know, this business have uh, the ECG going up and down. Uh, the same thing has happened uh, because, you know, we've had our ups in consumption, we've had our downs. Uh, typically, what really happens is we are living in a period of uncertainty. And particularly now with Omicron around and all the hoo-ha about it, uh, yet uh, unfounded, uh, but you know, there is uncertainty around. So consumption keeps going up, coming down, suddenly bottled up consumption is let loose. Uh, but overall, you know, it has been a hit on the economy. And um, I keep saying, you know, there are three types of products. One is a product which has lost consumption forever uh, in those 18 months and 20 months. Uh, that is a product like ice cream, an airline seat, which was never booked, a cinema ticket, which was lost. And then there's a second type of product, which where there was postponed demand. And these are, you know, the scooter you did not buy, the car you did not buy, the television you did not buy. You will buy it maybe two years later. So that demand hasn't gone anywhere. And the third kind of a demand was that completely new demand, you know, for products and categories, which nobody ever bought before, you know, so face masks, sanitizers, and a whole clutch of 21 different categories. Yeah. It depends which category you belong to. And the hit is deepest in one and the lightest in the other. Correct. So, so with all of this, how are you seeing the consumer behavior change? Because, you know, initially, as you mentioned, there was something as a category where the consumption is for life. A category which probably had, say, if you talk about luxury, entertainment, etc., that category has started to open up and how, and you're seeing that. So do you think that's something which is going to be the new normal in spite of COVID being there? Or do you think you will see those bouts and ups and downs uh, that will continue the moment you hear of a new wave, you'll see a downtick. Again, you know, there will be a point in time where people will get used to it. And again, you'll see that up move coming. Yeah. Uh, I would put it this way, that the virus is going to control consumption. Uh, mm. The virus is going to tell you when you can buy and when you mustn't buy. Mm. Uh, so to that extent, you know, uh, fear is going to rule and it's going to rule in every category. Yes, hospitality, luxury has opened up with a vengeance. There is a kind of a revenge, uh, you know, usage of hotels and resorts, uh, spas, etc. Uh, but, you know, again, this is going to be controlled by the virus because all of a sudden, even this consumption can get bottled up and bottled down. Uh, so I think, you know, uh, this business of saying, you know, people are going to come out and spend humongously all of a sudden uh, is going to be true. Uh, you know, consumption, which used to be in a drip, you know, month on month on month yeah. is likely to be, you know, uh, on a peak and then a trough altogether. So this is going to be the new reality. Right. So overall, are we trying to say now in terms of the change in consumption trend, how do you think brands need to reallocate their strategy according to you? Well, brands need to relook at what they're doing. And uh, brands need to, first of all, assess uh, whether their product and service is a want and a need or is it a desire and aspiration. So I'll put it into two buckets. Want and need is something that you and I will always want and need. And never mind if the environment is tough, we'll still go and buy it. And then desire and aspiration is the second bucket. And desires and aspiration bucket gets in the monies, uh, which are consumption monies. And desires and aspirations can get subjugated. Okay. So depending which category you belong to, brands will need to assess and say, uh, you know, how do I market these two categories differently? In terms of advertising strategy, the brands will need to take a call. When must I advertise? When must I not? So brands will need to follow the up and down of the virus uh, trajectory uh, till the virus exists around us. Uh, hopefully, uh, God willing, not too long. Absolutely. So is it right to say that, okay, when you, when you divide it between two buckets, the brands which are in the bucket where there is regular consumption, 
that will, you know, the spends in terms of marketing, the ideation in terms of marketing still will remain at normal C. However, when you talk about products and categories where the consumption trend will depend on the widest trend, there the marketing spends is something which will have to be bumped up in some way or the other. Yes, uh, this is where it calls for marketing sensitivity. In terms of saying that, you know, marketers need to get very much more sensitive than they were ever, ever before. Uh, marketers need to have a finger on the pulse of the consumer continuously, not only on the pulse of the consumer, but what's happening to the virus and yeah. what's happening to the fear economy, what's happening to uh, the consumption economy. See, at one end is the fear economy, at the other end is the consumption economy. They are opposites. Uh, a fear economy is a terrible economy where yeah. consumption goes down. Uh, a celebratory economy is the opposite of the fear economy. And I think, you know, taking consumers from the fear economy to the caution economy to the celebratory economy is going to be the key task of the marketeers ahead. Never mind what you market. Right. And, and overall, from here on, lastly, uh, Harish, if you have to look at, you know, world and economies across the world, how different are the consumption behaviors and how different will the brands have to behave? That's number one. And two, what is going to be the new normal from here on that slowly, steadily we need to adopt? Um, you see, one of the big things that I notice is uh, globally, localization is in, in a big, big way. Uh, if you look at France, for instance, France is the leader in localization today. And Hidalgo took Paris and she said, I want to make it a 15 minute city which means to say that, you know, uh, to hell uh, with the large supermarkets. But let me go into those tiny, tiny shops, which people can access within a 15 minute walk or a cycle duration. Cycling cities are coming in. You know, commute is uh, found to be terrible today. So I think, you know, localization seems to be the theme around. So if you look at France, I mean, that's the big theme. Now, if I go across to the United States of America, I think it's a slightly more gung-ho economy. Uh, localization can't happen so very dramatically within the biggest centers of New York and you know, some of the other big cities, if you look at Chicago, et cetera. So what will happen there is people are going to get very, very digital oriented because you know, digitalism, uh, which was scoffed at by a generation of Americans who said that I'll never ever buy digital, they are actually buying digital. So I think level playing field is this business of saying the whole globe is going digital. Everybody wants to do everything that they do digitally. And since they want to do it digitally, uh, you know, digital platforms, uh, digital solutions, digital payment solutions, digital education solutions, digi education, digi health, digi everything. You know, I think that's what's going to level out uh, consumption uh, during tough times. And I see that happening globally. Right. And, and lastly, if, if you have to give out uh, three points that any brand may be, may be small or big, especially, I mean, the big ones know what they are doing somewhere, but it's the smaller guys, the startups, the MSMEs who really need that guidance. What would those three major factors be that they should be considering to see growth from here on? Okay. Uh, the first one comes uh, intuitively to me, which simply says that, you know, hey, guys, you must have a foot in digital. A lot of the small brands have believed in only physical. Physical and digital are the yin and yang of your business, okay? So you need to be at least 52, 48, you know, uh, between physical and digital because one goes up, the other comes down, and then when normalcy returns, everything comes back. You must have a hedge. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, if you're local, I think, you know, you need to form a conglomerate of locals, you know, really talk the local story in a big way, because the pandemic gave a moment of time, you know, provided a moment of time where people said local is better than global. OK, and by that, I mean, the local corner grocery wala was respected that much more because he was forever open. He would help you. He, you could just walk up to him. It was a relationship that was still on. Whereas the large supermarket was something you weren't able to walk into because it was air conditioned, it was distant, and the people within it were also distant because, you know, it didn't matter whether you were a man, woman, or a dog or a cat who went into shop because at the end of the day, everything was automated in a particular manner. So that is the second thing, you know, respect local and think local and keep going with the local. The third important thing I would tell 
anybody, any entity is maintain those relationships because you know it's a but selling. All selling is a relationship. All marketing is a relationship. You cannot say that this relationship is going to get broken or truncated at any point of time. Maintain those relationships. People are very important. Never mind the fact that we are going to get onto the metaverse in a short period of time. We are going to have digital currencies. We are going to have digital avatars. Come what may, you and I are soft human beings, and the soft human beings needs soft touch. So don't Absolutely. ever lose that. That's the third one. Absolutely. I mean, this is absolutely so true. Thank you, Harish, so much for joining us on the show. Thank you. Always, it's a pleasure to get insights. And there's so much new to learn from you on the marketing aspect. I think we should try getting you once every quarter, at least, to understand what the trend change has been as well. Thank you, Harish. Good luck and stay safe. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.